Welcome to Michigan Planning Today. I am Bob Gibbs, your guest, and we're going to focus on the City of Troy's Big Beaver Corridor Master Plan. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Brent Sevenet. Uh, Brent is the Planning Director for the City of Troy. Welcome, Brent. Thanks, Bob. Great to be here. Tell us about the City of Troy. City of Troy is a, is a city, the largest city in Oakland County. It's a, got a population of about 85,000. 85, and it has a daytime population of well over 100,000. So it's a unique situation where our daytime population is actually higher than our, than our, our nighttime population. We are the head, uh, the location of a number of Fortune 500 companies, um, as well as other national and, and state uh, companies. Uh, we have, we're the 10th tenth, tenth largest city in Michigan, um, a, a medium household income of 96,000 people, also a very educated population. That's great. And the city of Troy is located on the eastern part of Oakland County. Yeah, east, north, northern part of Oakland County, um, northeastern part of Oakland County. Uh, it's an outer ring suburb of the city of Detroit. All right. Uh, well, tell me about Big Beaver Road and what the Big Beaver Corridor study is. So the Big Beaver is the most important corridor that runs uh, east and west through the city of Troy. It's our, it's our busiest corridor. and. Um, as, as Troy grew, as you see an image here on the screen, um, you, you see it's characterized by um, a 204 foot right of way, very busy road. There's about 50,000 cars a day that go up and down Big Beaver, so it's, it's extremely busy. And as you see from this image, there's a number of very large, very tall office buildings um, that provide a lot of jobs, but you'll notice they're surrounded for the most part by parking. Um, somewhat underutilized parking spaces, and they're set back f fairly far from Big Beaver. They have very little relationship with Big Beaver Road. So in 2006, the city wanted to develop Big Beaver as a world-class corridor. So we um, hired a consultant, Birchall Arroyo, to help us with, uh, with coming up with a vision for Big Beaver. And we, uh, we came up with the Big Beaver Corridor Study, which which includes uh, a number of recommendations for how Big Beaver should look and how to, how to improve Big Beaver so that it could be a 24-hour place, more walkable, more of a people place, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually create a, a world-class corridor. Yeah, with 50,000 cars per day, it's almost a major highway, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's also controlled by the Road Commission, mm -hmm. which, which mm -hmm. uh, presents some challenges because we don't actually, uh, we're not actually a responsible entity for that road. And it includes all land uses, residential, major shopping centers, major office, major employment centers. It, it, it does. Uh, what we you see on the slide uh, on the screen, we uh, incorporated the Big Beaver Corridor study into our master plan when we comprehensively comprehensively updated our master plan in 2008. It was the first comprehensive master plan effort in about 40 years. So we, uh, we recognize that one of the most important goals of that master plan was to improve Big Beaver. Uh, we uh, implemented the, our recommendations in our zoning ordinance that was updated comprehensively in 2011. What is a zoning ordinance and what is a master plan? Yeah, a master plan is, is the vision for, a, for your community. How, how this, the community, how the residents and elected officials and planning commission want that community to look for the next 5, 10, 20, 50 years in the future. It is a policy document. And a zoning ordinance is a law. And it's a tool that's used to implement the policy of the master plan. It's actually required by state law that if you have a zoning ordinance, you have a law to, to regulate land uses, that it's required to be based on a master plan. In fact, there's, there's state law that requires that master plans be updated at least, or at least looked at every five years to ensure they're still up to date. And then the zoning ordinance tells uh, property owners what to expect to be developed around them and what yes. kinds of uses are permitted on the property. Yes, yeah, and our zoning ordinance was uh, was a, a really a paradigm shift in 2011. We, we had a, a um, I would say a typical suburban type zoning ordinance that's, that most suburban communities, post-World War II communities, um, that's how they regulated land use, which is, as I indicated earlier, tall buildings, large parking lots, and the, the, the controlling factor really was separation of land uses. 
uh, offices were to be separated from residential, which were to be separated from industrial, and so on. And there wasn't this, this mixed-use concept that was actually mandated in, in most suburban areas that uses be separated from each other. So in 2011, in part because we had done this Big Beaver Corridor study, we recognized that there was a significant value in mixing land uses, not only horizontally on a, on a site, but also vertically on a site. So, um, in other words, having a mix of uses within a building, as you're, as you're an expert in, Bob, um, having retail, for example, on the first floor and then residential and or office above, uh, creates more vibrant, more walkable, more quality type places. And we wanted to incorporate this concept into Big Beaver. I think the city of Troy is unique in Oakland County in that it really has allowed high-rise buildings to be built along the corridor. I think you've got some buildings that are more than 10 stories tall. We do. We do, in fact, our tallest building is about 25 stories. And we, we, don't, we not only permit high, higher buildings, we actually encourage higher buildings. Why would the city encourage such large buildings? For, for a number of reasons. One is we, I talked earlier about how the buildings that were built uh, immediately after the war, in between you know post World War into the into the 60s, 70s, and 80s, large buildings that were set back far from the street as part of the separation of land uses, um, they, the relationship with Big Beaver was was really minimal. So, um, car, people that were in car automobiles or walking on Big Beaver really did not relate to the buildings, and the buildings did not relate to the street, and that's a lost opportunity. And it, if you want to create place, you really have, it's very important that the buildings relate to the street. And there's various ways that we did that with our zoning ordinance, but we actually, instead of setback requirements, which, which requires the building to be pushed back far from the street, we actually have build to lines where we mandate that the building be built in close proximity to Big Beaver. We also have requirements where there's, a, there's functioning windows and, and doors that you can see in and out of um, so that pedestrians can, can actually enter and leave the building on Big Beaver and relate to the street. Speaking of placemaking, here's an image from your 2006 master plan for Big Beaver. I think this was prepared by uh, Birchill Royal, now Giffels Webster, and yes. Grissom Metz. What is this sketch illustrating? Well, you, you'll notice if you compare this to the first image that you showed of, of Big Beaver, which was predominantly um, automobiles and parking lots, what jumps out from this on this slide is people. The activity is, is people, and the automobiles are in the background. And that's not to say that automobiles are not important. Obviously, you and I both arrived here by automobile, and they're an important part of, of everyday life. However, we wanted to define Big Beaver in a different way, which was, which was having buildings that related to the street that were that multiple uses where you could accomplish multiple different things in, with one trip. For example, you could, you could park the car, you could go to work, you could also walk to a restaurant. Um, or walk to a dentist, for example, and, and, uh, and bring more vibrancy and make it more of a 24-hour place. So the buildings have restaurants and shops on the first level, and there's sidewalks along the streetway with landscaping and streets. Exactly. It's really quite beautiful. Yeah. So this is one of the buildings built along Big Beaver Road. Is this, this is at Crooks in Big Beaver. What, is this Reflective of the plan? It is, and what, the reason I, I thought this image was important was this was, believe it or not, the, the, the first building that was developed after we adopted the, the, the Big Beaver Corridor study. This site was a gas station that sat vacant for a long time. Um, it was a, an eyesore, and we had a developer who was interested in putting a Starbucks here. He wanted to put a drive through on the site, but it was too small. Um, but he ended up putting this, this, this Starbucks restaurant here. Um, by all accounts, very successful. Even though it's located at a very busy intersection, uh, as I, I told, told you before, the traffic counts on Big Beaver is about 50,000 cars a day. On Crooks, I'm gonna guess it's at least half that. So you've got about 75,000 cars whizzing by, but on a summer day, you've got people sitting outside enjoying, enjoying the, uh, the sunshine. And the building is unique because it's, up, it's pulled up to Big Beaver Road with a patio, and then where's the parking? The parking's on the, in the back. Parkings in the back, lots of glass, so the, it brings the street activity into the building, and also lets people who are driving by see the activity in the building and think to themselves, "Hey, maybe I should pull over and grab a coffee." And that all contributes to making it more walkable. Exactly. This is another building on Big Beaver, and this is at Coolidge, the Ocean Prime Restaurant. Yeah, this is another. This is the second building that was that was. Uh, so I'm trying to tell a narrative here and show you how we've kind of evolved. 
uh, over time. This is the second building that was developed after the, after the corridor study. Ocean Prime, this was uh, located at the corner um, of Coolidge and, and Big Beaver in front of a large office complex. And uh, it's a beautiful building. The, what's, what's significant with this building is the, the quality of architecture, lots of glass and, and metal and, and, and brick and stone, but the quality of this outdoor seating. This is a very, very, it's a high-end restaurant, a very quality restaurant. And you, you see in this image on a sunny day, you can't find a seat outside. People want to be outside. And, and this, when you drive by, this is what you see uh, instead even of an though, empty parking lot. Even though it's on a busy corner, yep. probably 70,000 cars per day going by in mm -hmm. this corner. And this is a great example of uh, another restaurant contributing to making it more walkable. That's right. Here's a view of Big Beaver looking east. This is from the Somerset Collection Mall. And you can see Big Beaver is a major highway. It looks like it's six lanes or so, plus turning lanes with a large boulevard down the middle. <clears throat> Absolutely, and this is, it shows you how dynamic and how busy the city is. It also shows you the opportunity that we have for, for infill and for, for doing more on the corridor. Right, and I think the Ocean Prime is a good example of infill. That was a parking lot to an office building. That's right. And the developer just took a piece of property used for parking and mm -hmm. put a commercial use on it. It added not only activity to the Big Beaver Corridor, but added value uh, to the property and to the tax base for the city of Troy. It's got to be a big win for the developer to get an additional developable yep. property like that. And I would guess it would probably help lease office space in the, in the building next door. Yeah, I've read a survey recently that uh, the number one thing employers employees want today is to be able to walk to restaurants mm -hmm. and shops while they're working. Yep. So here's a view, I think, of the uh, uh, our planner's sketch of the proposed for Big Beaver. How is this different from the existing conditions? Well, you see the activity uh, on the on the sidewalks, and you see the, the placement of the of the buildings closer to the street. Uh, you still dominated by automobiles because it is a 204 foot right away with six lanes of traffic, but you start to bring more of a pedestrian uh, scene, uh, more activity, more more things to do, more places to spend money, more destinations to walk to and from. Uh, this is what we uh, what we intend to accomplish over the long term. Well, the city of Troy is unique, I think, because it doesn't have a real downtown, a walkable downtown, does it? That's correct. Uh, a lot of commercial and mm -hmm. residential shopping hoods, but uh, shopping hoods, <laughs> shopping districts. Right. But uh, it doesn't have a downtown, so this would help uh, give the city a downtown in a way, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's I think that that's the the goal is to is to create. The, the opportunity for a downtown, we missed that boat 120 years ago. Um, but we can still have a vibrant, uh, successful major corridor that runs through the middle of the city. Here's, here's another building on Big Beaver Road. This is, uh, looks like a restaurant and shops. Tell us about this building. This is called the Galleria of Troy. Uh, there's there's uh, a number of buildings that, that, that front on Big Beaver. This is located on the north side of Big Beaver, just west of I-75. Um, I didn't include a slide here, but behind this, these buildings are uh, hotels. So um, the owner of, of this, these, these buildings also owns the hotels, and he's managed to create a development where uh, hotel guests can, can park their car, stay at a, at a great new hotel, and walk to numerous uh, restaurants along Big Beaver. This is also, I was very excited because, when this was constructed because this gave me an opportunity to walk to lunch for the first time. For, for years, I would have to get in my car and drive. And with 30 minute lunch, by the time you get in your car, drive, grab lunch, you're, you have to eat at your desk. This, this, this was a walking destination. This, this really illustrates the best practices of planning today because the buildings are up to Big Beaver Road. There's wide sidewalks, patios, and dining. Uh, really nice buildings with a lot of glass and restaurants on the first level. And then the parking again is in the back. Absolutely. And what's, what's interesting here is um, to the right of the picture is a public sidewalk. To the left, to the left of, of, uh, of that sidewalk, that's privately owned. But where that line is, uh, where the private uh, property ends and where the public property begins is very unclear. And it really doesn't matter. So someone, someone going for a walk down the public sidewalk can, can veer off and sit on the bench, or they can, if they have a gum wrapper, they can throw it in the garbage can, or they can, they can go into the restaurant or sit outside. So it, it, it's, it's strengthening and improving that, that pedestrian realm and, that's 
But L Brent, looking at this, it seems so logical to do this, that you would want the building up to the, side, up to the sidewalk, you'd want patios along the sidewalk and the parking in the mm -hmm. back, but it's really very visionary and unusual for cities to do that. Uh, almost every city we work with still allows the parking to be in the front, the buildings to be set in the back, and then stormwater retentions behind us. So this is very visionary. It, it's visionary, but it's a lot of work. You have to, you have to stick to your guns, you really do, because um, there's a lot of developers who don't understand the vision that we have for the, for the city and they, they don't care. They want to sell hamburgers or Subway sandwiches or whatever. So it's very important that you stick to your vision and you apply the laws equally so to everybody. So sometimes you find a little resistance to this proposal from yes. The developers? Yes. Oh. Especially developers. Sometimes developers, uh, when they build out their, their tenant spaces, they use architects from out of state who've never been to Big Beaver and don't see what we're trying to accomplish. So sometimes it's an education process. Here's another newer building on Big Beaver, and this illustrates from an aerial point how the building is a large building, but it's up to the sidewalk with patios and doors on the sidewalk and the parking in the back. So it would be hard to achieve the walkability if these were flipped around, if the building were in the back and the parking were in the front? It, it, it would. Now, this, this building was actually approved as a PUD, but the Big Beaver uh, corridor plan was in place at the time, so we used elements and applied elements of the, of the plan to this project. Notice in the bottom left corner, there's a, there's a bank drive through um, It was important to the bank to have that drive through but it was important for, to the city that that drive through not negatively impact walkability on the site. So notice how it was placed behind the front of that building. Um, with a with a architectural element, uh, like a tower element on the front of that building, which announces that building, they still have their drive-through, but it doesn't dominate the site. It's it's in the background and it plays a lesser role. I'm sure it takes a lot of work and a lot of negotiating back and forth. Definitely, to happen. Definitely. Tell us about yourself, Brent. You, uh, you are uh, an AICP, which means you're a member of the American Institute of Certified Planners. Yes, that's true. Uh, where are you from, and how did you get interested in planning? I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. I've been in Michigan for about 26 years. I'm originally from Canada. I'm a, uh, my father was in the Canadian Air Force. I'm a military brat. I went to high school in Ottawa. Uh, when I came to Michigan, I was a uh, planning consultant in Genesee County for seven years. So I worked for a multidiscipline consulting firm, which was good because I, I got to work on all kinds of different projects, master plans, zoning ordinances, parks and recreation plans. And after seven years, I was hired as a principal planner uh, for the city of Troy. That was in 2002. In 2010, I was promoted to planning director, and a few months ago, I was promoted to community development director. I still uh, play the role of the planning director for the city of Troy, but I've taken on some additional responsibilities. And what does the community development director do? What are those responsibilities? I still oversee planning and code enforcement, but I also now oversee our building department. Is the city of Troy still growing? It's. Uh, it, the, the population is fairly uh, is, is fair, tapered off for the most part, um, but and, and most of the vacant the vacant farmers fields are, are for the most part long gone. Uh, there's not a lot of vacant property left, but there's a lot of um, teardowns, a lot of assemblies and and, and uh, infills like we're talking about now. Yeah, I remember years ago Troy had still had a lot of cornfields. Mm -hmm. I remember watching the Somerset collection being built and the Kresge headquarters. It really went through a rapid growth, but there's still a lot of new construction occurring. In yeah, Troy. definitely. We our farmers' fields are gone. Our our parking lots are now our farmers' fields. That's the opportunity. What's this an illustration of uh, Big Beaver Road looking at I-75? This uh, this illustrates the the. the the quality of streetscape that we're looking to find in that automotive realm with, with, with tree, a tree canopy, uh, you see the pu public art, um, other elements to improve the, the automotive portion of Big Beaver. Again, it's still an automotive focused road in that it's got six lanes of traffic, but there's still ways to improve that. So did you consider getting rid of all the cars on Peak Beaver and making it a pedestrian <laughs> walkable street? Yeah, I don't think the Road Commission would support that. They do support the concepts of the plan, though. They, they, were, they were really great to work with, but um, at its core, its, its main function is still to move automobiles through, through Troy. This is a really interesting building. Uh, tell us about this. This is on Big Beaver by I-75, right next to the City Hall. Yes, this is the this is DMC Children's Hospital. It's a three-story building. It's about 65,000 square feet. And it's one of our first multi-story buildings that were approved under the zoning ordinance. This is a really cool building. Um, 
when uh, if someone asked me where, where would I find DMC Children's Hospital, I'd say go to Big Beaver and you'll see it. Well, what does it look like? You'll know when you see it. Um, the the color the, the colored masonry uh, blocks are, are beautiful. The the use of the windows um, different different colored glass at night. This is a gorgeous building, but notice it's still very close proximity to Big Beaver Road. Um, it's got f windows and doors that face Big Beaver. The activity in the building is visible from the street. Um, parking you'll notice beside behind the building. Um, so it's in the forefront of Big Beaver and it adds a, a just a beautiful building to that to that streetscape of Big Beaver. It is a really beautiful building. Yeah. Uh, it seems like over time you're really building a walkable downtown because eventually these voids will be filled with new buildings um, built up to the sidewalk. Absolutely and we and we we established the, the vision for Big Beaver in 2006 it's now almost 2020 so we're 14 years in. It's a process. Um, we're not where we want to be, but we're we're well on our way, I think. Here's some new residential buildings along Big Beaver. Tell us about these. So this this is actually uh, something I want to talk about. Um, this is in our a, another form-based district. It's actually not Big Beaver. This is located oh. um, at the corner of uh, so, uh, Square Lake Road and Livernoy, but it is form-based zoning. And why I thought this was important was uh, we have a need for um, alternative housing types than just single family residential, which is what most people think of when they think of Troy. We need more attached housing and more uh, more dense. Um, that's that, that D word that we've talked about before, Bob, density. And what we've got at, at 21 intersections of major mile roads throughout the city, we've got these form-based districts where, like Big Beaver, we, we want um, the building to relate more to the street and we want to provide a mix of uses and also more various housing types. This was the first um, multifamily development. It's 43 units and it was, a, it was approved under our, our neighborhood node zoning district, which is somewhat similar to, to Big Beaver. Um, some pushback because we, we introduce uh, density um, to a corner that has never seen density before. So I think this, this project is, uh, is really well designed and well done. Um, there are residents of the city who disagree with me, to be fair. Um, I think in part because of the density, to be honest. Um, but you see this building also relates to Square Lake Road um, and, and really kind of announces itself as, as part of that, of that road. So it's on a major road, Square Lake yes. Road. And it's, it's on Livernoy, just south of Square Lake. Okay, Road. Livernoy, yeah. and yeah. it's uh, all residential, yes. three stories. And uh, are these apartments or condominiums, one on top of another? These are these are condominiums. They're vertical. So so you see the uh, the image on the screen. Um, you you would go in and you go up. Oh, yeah, you go see. up. So like a townhome. Like a townhome, yes. Okay, great. But with a busy road like that, it probably would be a little odd to put a single family house or a lower density on that. I, I would agree. And, and, that, and I think that was one of, the, one of the reasons that the developer sought this site out is because of that, um, the character of that, of that road. Uh, it could, offers maybe a transition from a busy street into a, a neighborhood or subdivision. Okay, mm -hmm. is this another view of Big Beaver Road? This, What's this? This is uh, the new development at 888 West Big Beaver. This is located on the north side of Big Beaver, uh, the corner of northeast corner of Crooks and Big Beaver. Um, this is called uh, Town. What's the name of it? Troy Cent Troy Center Development. Um, this is where your expertise comes in, Bob. I, I, this, I put this slide in for you. This is uh, the ground level um, of a parking deck, a seven-story parking deck, where they've activated the ground floor by introducing a coffee shop and a, and a workout facility and a massage uh, facility into the ground floor of that parking lot and actually helped to create a, an internal street between the parking deck and the buildings that front on Big Beaver. There's actually a, a, a street that's been created internal uh, to the development. This is interesting on so many levels. First of all, it's fascinating to put retail on the first level of a parking garage. And congratulations for getting the retail to have a lot of glass <laughs> and clear glass. Very often it's uh, tented glass. But also this was a office building that was redeveloped and there was a lot of new retail and restaurants added to this 
That's right. Utilize site. That's right. When when the developer purchased it, the developer is called Unicorp. They're out of uh, Orlando, Florida. There was a 13-story building that I think was was uh, not at 100% occupancy. There was a two-story parking deck that looked like it was safe, but it, it I've seen nicer parking decks in in uh, you know in in Michigan, and the developer. Uh, put uh, numerous buildings on Big Beaver, restaurants and, and other retail buildings on Big Beaver, also on Crooks, a Seasons 52 and a Yard House restaurant. I then added that seven story parking deck and there's a 270 unit apartment building that's proposed to be attached to that parking deck. That's, that's gonna be starting construction very soon. So uh, a, a very uh, significant mixed use development at the corner of Crooks and Big Beaver. This is a really interesting trend to take commercial property, maybe just office, developed in 20, 30 years ago, and then keeping the primary use, but then infilling retail and restaurants and residential on Absolutely. the same set of property. And adding value to that site and adding, adding a, and this, this is a, a, a view of the, the development in its entirety. You see the existing 13-story building that was, uh, that was repainted and had some uh, significant work done inside. And then you see the parking deck to the right. It's a beautiful parking deck. And to the right, on the right side of that uh, parking deck, on the north side of it, there, there will be a seven-story, 270-unit apartment building. It, it is a very beautiful parking deck. It's got an artistic color panels mm -hmm. and such, and it's got an internal Main Street. I, I think this is a very interesting project to be a good case study. There's a lot of communities in Michigan that have older commercial suburbs that probably could have an infill. And I understand back in the 60s and 70s, Sites were developed with twice the parking they're building today, so in a lot of cases, these parking lots could be infilled with other uses. A couple things to add to that comment, Bob, I agree 100%. One is when we uh, comprehensively updated our, our zoning ordinance in 2011, we took a serious look at our parking, and we wanted to make sure we got it right, because we did find, as you said, that we required too much parking for a number of different uses. As per this, this parking deck, it is a really nice parking deck. The city actually incentivized the construction of this parking deck. Um, our DDA uh, in developed a, a new program called QDI, which stands for Quality Development Initiative, where a certain percentage of the recapture of the, of the, um, the incremental increase in the property value goes back to the developer. So in, in a way, it, it, it incentivizes, because they're very expensive, as you know, they can be $20,000 to $25,000 a space for a yeah, parking It's almost deck. impossible for the private sector to build a garage all on its own. Right. So there was a, a public-private sort of partnership right. there. Right. And as you know, if, if, if you want to truly be walkable, you've got you've to have deck parking. You can't get to walkability with surface parking. It's, it, you can't do it. You can't do it. There's another new uh, building along Big Beaver. So this is the this is the ground floor, uh, the first floor retail that fronts on that the, the project that we spoke about. Um, this is the one, although it's a one story building, the 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 architect developed this with, with a very high ceilings, uh, with a tower element on the corner. Uh, so even though it's a one story building, it still it engages the street and has a strong relationship with the street. This is a Shake Shack building, part of that same development. And the reason I included these slides is to show you the quality, the, the architectural quality. Um, I mentioned earlier the, that internal street. If you go back to that Shake Shack slide really quickly, this is across the street from that parking deck where, where that the first floor retail was. And you can see the, the quality elements here, you know, the lighting, the sidewalk, and other elements that, that make this a people place. Even though it's a street, it's comfortable for pedestrians. We're gonna have to wrap it up. I'd like to end with uh, a project that's on the boards for the city of Troy. First of all, thank you very much for joining us today. This is fascinating. I think the city of Troy really has been a progressive visionary community in how to retrofit these aging suburbs and how to adapt new planning principles. Talk a little bit about this one that you're approving right now? This went before the Planning Commission last Tuesday. It received preliminary site plan approval and special use approval. This is a Hyatt Place Hotel. It's a six-story building with a Ford's Garage building fronting on, uh, on, on this project with, a, with rooftop dining on top of the Ford's Garage. From what I hear, I've never been to Ford's Garage. There's one in Dearborn. It's a very dynamic, fun restaurant, and this is a quality development that's really going to add the, to the Big Beaver streetscape. Brent, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a fascinating talk about the city's vision and implementation of these new planning principles, and we we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Great to be here, thanks. 
Thank you for watching Michigan Planning Today. I'm your host, Bob Gibbs, and we look forward to seeing you again in the near future.